today. Again, the title of my message is, Are You in Your Own Head? Right? From that video, I, I, I know too many of us, we're in our own heads. We have more things going on in our mind than what we need. We worry about things we ought not even worry about. We produce problems in our life because we think too much about the problem. We don't, we don't give God enough credit. We don't put God first. As you saw in that video, that's real. I mean, that's, that's as blatant as it can be. Hallelujah. And a lot of us, I'm afraid, we're running that road. We're walking that road. We come to church, we do the right things, we say the right things, we look good, we smell good. Right? We greet the pastor and we greet others and we're, life is good. But if, if you would just be honest with yourself, look at, look at yourself in the mirror and find out who are you really? Where is your mindset? What are you thinking about? Hallelujah. Amen. So when we worship the Father, we are to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's God's Word. We are, we are to be in the presence of the Father. Today I had you all close your eyes and took the karaoke words off of the wall so that you would enter into His presence. Stand before the Father because one day you're going to. So when we stand before the Father and we get in a realistic idea of what it is to praise Him, you'll enter into His presence. When you enter into His presence, then He's going to start to talk to you. And when He starts to talk to you, He's going to start to give you advice. And when he starts to give you advice, it's going to be whether or not you listen and take that advice. When you do, he's going to take you to a different level. And when you get to that level, you're probably going to uh, plane off for a little while. But when you, the more you talk to God and spend more time with God, he's going to take you to yet another level. And you're going to continue to grow in the Father. How many of you want that? The best way to do that is to get out of your own head. Hallelujah. We've got to get out of our own head. Too many times we think and we worry about wonder, wondering what that person said or anticipating that this person said this about me or this person said that about me. It, listen, it's between them and God. All you got to do is let go of it. Amen. You got to let go and you got to let God. You got to give it to the Father. Stop worrying about all the garbage that's going on around you and start focusing on Jesus Christ. He'll take care of everything else. Amen. Amen. The question that falls down is, do you believe in the Scriptures or do you believe in Satan's lies? That's really where it comes down to. Do you understand? If you're looking in that mirror and all of a sudden it tells you that you're ugly or you're fat or you don't measure up, understand the word that's being used there, it says you. It's someone else that's talking to you. It's somebody else that's in your head because they're saying you are too chubby or fat. You are too ugly. You are a failure. You will never add up. You can never get past your past. You can never get over your past, right? You, you, you. That's somebody pointing a finger saying you. That's Satan in your life. Church, we've got to get away from that. You've got to get out of your own head. Too many people, we worry about what other people say or think or do. Who cares? Somebody, said, somebody come up to me, I don't know, within the past two weeks. They come up to me and said, hey, pastor, some, so-and-so was saying this about you. And I said, praise God. They said, what do you mean? I said, they're leaving you alone. Yeah. I don't care. I know who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am in Christ. Amen. Amen. We've got to be comfortable with who we are in Christ. When you are that comfortable, it doesn't matter what other people say about you. Because they're the one that has to give an account to the Father for what they say. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Amen. We can't worry about... How many of you, you, you talk to people and they worry so much about what could happen? And we worry so much about what could happen that we're forgetting to live for today. I, I, count, I counseled a family, you know, where they were, all they did was worry and worry and worry and worry about everything. And they got their little kids hanging on their leg going, hey, play with me, Dad. Mom, play with me. They're forgetting their kids. They're training up their child in a very negative lifestyle because they're always worrying about everything. If you can't control it, stop worrying about it. And if you can control it, give it to the Father. Amen? Amen? Look at your neighbor saying, I'm letting go of this. Hallelujah. Can we turn those lights on in the back, please? 
Amen? Scriptures are the strength to those who believe. Scriptures are the strength to those who believe. Believe in God the Father. Can you say amen? Scriptures are the strength to those who trust and obey in God's Word. Trust and obey, that's an old song. But you know that's in the Scriptures. God's Word talks about that He's coming back, and He's coming back to judge those who do not obey His Word. We've got to be obedient to what His Word says. Hallelujah. Or you're going to be like the gentleman in that video. Well, but I came to church. I sang in the choir. I did all these wonderful things for you. You did, but you didn't accept me. You didn't believe unto me fully. You didn't trust in my word enough to obey what it said. Remember, as I told you in Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 3 talks about all of the children that left the bondage of Egypt and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And God caused them to die off because they did not obey. It doesn't say believe. It says obey. You read it. Amen? Back in, in, the, in uh, uh, Exodus, it talks about because they didn't believe. But then God's word prefaces it in Hebrews chapter 3. He caused them to die off because they did not obey. And then it goes on to say, and we see that if you do not believe, God views that as disobedience. So you're reading God's word, and if you're not believing what God's word says, and you're going against it anyway, God calls that being disobedient. Because you simply don't believe what it is that you're reading. Why? Because you're in your own head. I want to do my thing. I want to live my life my way. Yes, I'm calling myself a Christian. Yes, I'm coming to church. I look good. I smell good. I'm wearing the right clothes. I have the best parking spot, right? All all of these crazy things. But are you living for Christ? Are you just living to look good in front of everybody else? Are you following what I'm saying? If God's word calls it sin, it is sin. Period. And it's not like he's going to let you slide into heaven. Oh, it's all right. I'll overlook that. Go ahead on in. Right? As we finished up in the book of Revelation on Bible study on Wednesday nights, we, we read in three different spots or three different locations that those who tell lie, those who practice lies, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. There's a lot of us when you, we, we just breathe and we're lying. Hello? Sometimes we lie to ourselves. We're in our own head. Yes? We've got to come to an understanding of what all of that means. Are you in your own head? Look at your neighbor and say, are you in your own head? <laughs> Scriptures are strength to those who have faith. Say faith. faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Right? How do we get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's, his, that's what he says. That's how we get faith. So we've got to first hear the Word of God, but we've got to believe and trust in the Word of God. Can you say amen? amen? Some of us, we're in our heads so much that there's no room for God in there. Wow, it got quiet. Some of us are in our own heads so much, there's no room for God in there. <laughs> are you following? We've got, to, we've got to make room for the Father even in our thought process and the things that we think about in our actions, of course, but first it begins with a thought. What are we thinking about? How are we thinking about that? Because your actions are going to follow your thoughts. Hello? Amen? Or am I making sense today? Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 1 and we're going to start in verse 18. And it talks about what God is going to do to those who are not being obedient. It talks about His wrath coming upon the people. Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Say ungodliness. And unrighteousness. Say unrighteousness. Of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. You know the truth. You know what God's Word says, but you suppress it and you continue to sin. You suppress it because you think nobody's going to know. 
Remember, there's books in heaven. Somebody's taking notes on your life, on everything that you do and everything that you say. Hello? We have to know that. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. When you stand before the Father, we are going to be without an excuse if we stand there and we try to be our own attorney on our own life based off the sins that we practice and we stand before God trying to justify ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus Christ is our advocate, yes. But listen, just because you've accepted and received Jesus Christ in your life, that doesn't mean it's okay to run out there and continue to sin. That it's all covered under the blood. It's covered under the blood. It's covered under the blood. I don't think so. There's coming a time where you're going to have to face that giant. Hello? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You understanding? Verse 21, because all they, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, in their own head. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of an incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their own heart, to dis dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator." who is blessed forever. Amen. It says that God gave them up. If you want to continue to live in your sin, God is going to allow you to do so. He loves you enough because you're making a choice that you don't want Him in your life. That you want to continue to sin, so He's going to say, I love you, but go ahead. I'm going to give you up to your own unrighteousness, as we'll read later, in your own, up to your own reprobate mind. Up to your own foul thinking. If that's what you want, here you go. Do you remember the Israelites when they complained about God feeding them manna? They had too much manna. We want meat. God, give us meat. God said, is that really what you want? Okay, here you go. So he gave them quail until it was coming out of their nostrils. Is that really what you want? Amen. Here it is. If you want to live in sin, God's going to let you live in sin. You will pay the penalty of that sin you will pay the penalty of that sin. Right. You've got to understand that. There's a consequence for everything that you and I do. Yeah. Everything that we do, a consequence. Hmm. God, God, they knew God, but they did not glorify God. Nor were they thankful. Nor were they thankful. When we do praise and worship, today I had you close your eyes and picture yourself standing before the Father and just giving Him praise and allow the worship team to do the worshiping. Did you feel a difference when you did that? This means yes. This means no. Okay? Did you feel a difference? Then do that. Too many times we want to do adult karaoke and read the Word. We stand there and we just read the words as opposed to entering into what the words are trying to say. Does that make sense? Some people like to go to bed with the TV on because there's some background noise. Stand before the Father and pray and give Him praise and allow the worship team to be your background noise. They are the ones ushering in the presence of the Father. You are to be the one that's in the presence of the Father. Amen? Does that make sense? They became futile in their own thoughts. Open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians 2.9. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.9. Many of us are worrying about the end days. Many of us are worrying about what's taking place in this world. Listen, we need to have our eyes open and be paying attention to what's going on, certainly. But don't live there. Don't live there. Amen? It says in, in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 9, The coming of the lawless one, that's the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan. Say the working of Satan. 
So the lawless one is the Antichrist, and he is acting upon what Satan is telling him to do or directing him to do. With all power, say all power. power. Signs, say signs. Signs. And lying wonders. Right? Lying wonders. You and I are going to start to see all of these things. Or we, we're seeing things that are powerful in today, yes, but we're starting to see different signs of things that are happening around the world. We are certainly seeing lying wonders, are we not? We're being lied to just about everything. We're starting to realize how much we have been lied to. Hello? Remember, it's all the working of Satan. Verse 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, say those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. That they might be saved. Not that they are, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Do you know why? Because that's what they want. That they should believe the lie and that they may be condemned, say condemned, who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We can't live there, guys. You can listen, you you can turn me off. If you're sitting there and you're living in sin and you know you're living in sin, you can turn me off just by just uh, all of a sudden let's look at the ceiling. Hey, I got to get something out of my purse. Hey, is, is that my phone? What's on my phone? Right? You can just divert what Pastor Tim is saying all you want to, but you're still living in the sin. You're still <laughs> you're still going to face Yahweh. You're going to stand before the Father and you're going to give an account of your life. And you're going to sit there and you might go, but, but I never heard that before. And he's going to, Pastor Tim told you about 900 times. Yes. Yes. In fact, he told you 878 times that you were in church because you missed this day. Every other month you missed, right? right. He's got such detail of your life. Yes. He knows exactly what each and every one of us are doing. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. We think we're slick and we're, we're diverting, right? We think we're just sliding by. There's not going to be any sliding by in heaven. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Amen? <laughs> Some of you are starting to get worried. Amen. That's what I like to hear. Thank you, Michelle. Go backwards. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Starting in verse 3. I went way back. 2 Thessalonians 1, where am I at? 1, 3, yes. It says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and your faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay, I want you to understand these words. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. You got somebody that's just a thorn in your side? God's word right there tells me that he is going to pay them back with tribulation who trouble you. That is not up to you to pay them back. Amen? You don't have that right. Give it to God. Let him go after them. Hallelujah. Too many of us, we pray, God, go get them. God, bring judgment on them. That's not right, but some of us do that. What if others were praying that about you? Oh, different story. (laughs) Hello? Right? Old man became an old my, right? Hmm. And give to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello? You just heard it. Did you not? Let me reread that. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's bringing vengeance. 
Mm. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. When He comes in that day to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Can you say amen? Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness in the work of faith and with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. It's a righteous thing with the Father. When we walk with the Father, when we obey what God's word tells us to do, God counts it as a righteous thing. Amen? Now, I said this before, I'm, I'm just a pastor. I'm nobody special. I'm, just, I'm no different than any of you. But when I heard the word of God, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I just believed it. And then I jumped into it and started reading it for myself. And the whole world opened up to me. And people that I knew prior to me walking as a Christian are like, you became a pastor? Yes, me. But I knew you. I said, that's right. You knew me. I'm no longer that person. Amen. And neither are you if we're being obedient to what God's word tells us to do. Amen. If. It's a huge word in the Bible, isn't it? God wants to give you and I rest. Did you know that? We need to be stronger in our own minds than Satan is in this world. We need to be stronger in our own minds than what Satan is in this world. Trouble is coming. Persecutions are coming. You've got to be right in your... Have you ever heard the old term, he's not right in the head? Hello? Well, there's some of us, you know, we're not right in the head. If you've never heard that term, you might be it. Amen? We got, you got to be right in your head. Right according to the gospel. Acceptable and pleasing and holy unto Him. Amen? Amen? If that was never you, today you can change that and you can start today. But you got to get out of your own head with the negativity. We've got to start speaking life and not death. We've got to start speaking truth over things and not a lie. We can't buy into what a lie is or what a lie would tell you that somebody else, oh, it's going to be okay. You don't have to worry about that. Or he's being extravagant. Or he's just worrying about every little situation. Neither one of us can add one cubit to our stature by worrying. That's what God's Word says. Not one cubit. I can't put hair back on my head. Amen? I can't do it. And I don't, you know, Rogaine doesn't work. Amen. Not that I've tried it. Listen, this is what I know. This is what I know. I'm comfortable with who I am. If you're not comfortable with who I am, that's on you. Hello? Thank you. Amen. Because I've had people come up to me and say, have you you tried this? I'm like, for what? For what? Amen. It's not bothering me. Apparently it's bothering you. Amen? The way I'm looking at it, God created me this way. Amen. Amen. And for some reason, He created you that way. Hallelujah. Get out of your own head. We've got to get out of the thought process, guys, of everybody's against me. We've got to get out of the thought process that that person's talking about me. I've counseled people and I've talked about people, and when I'm talking, they're always trying to finish my sentence. They're always trying to finish what it is that I'm saying. Right? They're always trying to stay a step ahead of me whenever I'm counseling. So when I know that, I'm going to throw you a curveball. Hallelujah. Because you don't know everything, nor do I. And I don't profess to. But we got to get out of our own head sometimes. Some of us, we walk around in a life in a world of depression and oppression and anxiety because we're in here way too much. Get out of here. 
Get out of here. Get out of your own head. Get around other people. You want to know how to beat anxiety? Get around other people. You want to know how to beat depression? Get around uplifting people. All of this is through reading the Word of God, of course. Get into the Psalms. I say this numerous times. Get into the Psalms. David wrote songs about all the garbage he was going through in life, about people that wanted to kill him, about his anxiety, about his depression and his oppression. Psalms chapters 30 through chapter 40 talk an awful lot about anxiety and depression. You want to beat it? Read the Psalms. When David was having a bad day, he sang to God. Hello? And he wrote a song about it. And you're reading it called the Psalms. Can you say amen? Amen. We've got to be able to speak life to everybody that we talk to. this, This dying and changing world constantly is dying and constantly is changing. I, I've got someone that I work with, and, and whenever there's a death in their family, it's, it's kind of a, oh, oh, oh my, oh, woe is me, and what have you. And she's like, this is the seventh person that has died in the past five years in our family. I'm like, you're blessed. I know people who have lost 15 people in two years. I said, why are you focusing on how many died? Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Quit, listen. You or I cannot end our, our life on how our terms and how we want it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says what? There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. God has an end date for each and every one of us. Amen? You have an end date. You and I can't change our end date. He does. Can you say he does? Amen. Remember, all power, signs, lying wonders unrighteous deception. We need to put our best foot forward in this life. We need to do everything that we can do. If, Haley, if you can make ready that next video, right? There's times that it's going to hurt. There's times when you and I do things that it's going to hurt. Usually when God wants you to move out or to step out in obedience and trust in Him through faith, it's going to hurt. It's usually going to stretch you. It's usually when he's trying to tell you something, it's 3 a.m. And he tells you to roll out of your bed and get on your knees and pray to him. And you're going, but it is so warm underneath of my covers right now. I can't, I can't do it, Lord. Right? You can't do that. Really? You just, you just fail to test. Amen? You got to understand that there are things that he's going to put in your path. It might be to call somebody. It might be to go knock on their door and see somebody. But you are the one that has to fight for you. You are the one that's got to believe in your own mind that you are strong enough to do it. You've got to believe you and you alone are the only one that can believe that you've got the strength to do it. But you've got to get out of your own head. If you're ready, go ahead and play it.